Hey everyone, it's Hello. Megan and Heidi, and we'll give everybody a second or two to jump on and join us for our little live fun here. I'm going to refresh the actual computer screen because it makes it a lot easier to see your comments and to participate and engage with you guys. So if you just want to jump on, let us know that you're here, where you're from, say hello. We'd love, love, love to connect with you guys. So Heidi and I have been friends for ever, ever. <laughs> like, I think I, I did say the other day we've been friends for more than 30 years. That's sad. Is it? It's sad that we're getting that old. Very. <laughs> it's kind of awesome though, too. No, it is pretty awesome. Um, but like legitimately, we were in the nursery together at church from early on. We were in kindergarten together. And even though Heidi kind of went off and had moved countries, moved <laughs> countries and came back and her parents were missionaries, um, Heidi's no stranger to success. She is a do you're making the camera bounce. Sorry. <laughs> she is a doctor of physical therapy. She currently is the manager of a privately owned clinic with nine nine different locations. Well, almost nine. We're almost opening nine. Our ninth one. Opening their ninth location. Um, she is growing in her management, communication, people skills constantly, and she's always teaching me new things. Um, she runs an awesome Bible study. Well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> she we she encourages <laughs> me in how she runs it or in what she's doing with it constantly. Um, and she's been working in this challenge with me, and she's been reading through some of the comments with me, so we thought we would jump on together so that we could actually – encourage you guys together, talk about challenge two, uh, challenge three, I'm going to talk about tonight at nine o'clock, we'll be here live, and I have one more challenge, and then like a bonus sheet of sort of the fun different things um, that we're sharing and doing to help you kind of grow, and hey Mickey, thanks for jumping on, thanks for commenting, um, but thanks the for calling us youthful, <laughs> <laughs> we do appreciate that too, right, um, and so we were talking about challenge one, and one of the things that Heidi pointed out from the Bible study that she was doing, hey Mary, thanks for jumping in, uh, was just talking about dreaming big. Like if you, what was it, what did it say? If you couldn't be, or if you, if, if you, what would you need to never be jealous of anybody else or always be happy with, with life? Life. Oh no, Tiffany, we are live. We are live, and I don't know how to tell you that we're live, other than, I'm sorry this bounces. I need to get a new stabilizing camera. Like, I like doing my live things from my actual camera, but because of Facebook Live, I'm doing it from the phone, and so I need an actual mount. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, um, so what are some of those things? And... I really have appreciated so much the comments that you guys are sharing, Jennifer and Julie and Debbie and Tammy, like all of you guys are just like, I'm so excited that you're here in this challenge, that you're present, that you're being vulnerable and honest. Again, like I just want to reemphasize, there's no wrong answers. There's no wrong goal to have. There's no dream too big and there's no task too small to help you grow in a more fulfilling life. And that's what I guess Heidi and I were really trying to like talk about and stress is that it's not about having like this perfectly balanced schedule or balanced scale to live a balanced, fulfilled life. It's about what's that, that next thing that's going to make you feel accomplished and meet mm -hmm. those six kind of human needs that we all have for like certainty and variety and connection and mm -hmm. giving back, right? An awesome spiritual life, unmovable, unshaken, unshakable in my faith. That is a fantastic goal. What was the other one? It won't play for me. I might have to watch it after the fact. Oh, no, Tiffany. I'm so sorry. I guess we're still rolling here. Yeah, we're still rolling. We're still going. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not, it's not a, it's a wonderful thing to be content in life. It's an amazing thing. We all need to find a level of contentment where we are, no matter our circumstances, no matter what bumps life throws at us. Finding contentment and joy in the here and now is beautiful and desirable and, and something that 
I think we all want to have, right? I mean, I'm not crazy on that, but... No, and that we all should have. I mean, we right. all should be um, not constantly thinking of, of what's next and right. where... I can only be next. happy if mm-hmm. this happens, yes. or I can only be happy when that happens. It is it is being happy and enjoying the moments that you're in, but also having that vision and hope of the future that really was designed in you, I believe. Like, I believe that we were all designed um, intelligently and... What's the word I'm looking for? Like, we were in, we were designed to connect and to love and to share and to have purpose yeah and not just purpose there you go be. right right so that's part of what this challenge is all about is kind of finding some of those things so that we can take the action steps into 2017 and it's it's really truly a mini challenge I pulled stuff out of what is our 30 day challenge because I knew that 30 days was just going to be too much to try to do again here in December when we've already we already did it earlier this year. I wanted that kickstart as we go into the new year, as we're going into the holidays. I want to pump up our people skills in understanding our personalities, understanding ourselves better, and just sort of like start equipping us, inspiring each other, motivating each other to go to that next level. Um, whether it be spiritually, financially, in business, in family, in health, it, it really doesn't matter because all of these things that we're asking you to dig deep on apply there, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So for challenge two, I really wanted to talk to you guys more about uh, scheduling your time and knowing your priorities. So I kind of wrote it in the challenge already. Like one of the things that, you know, we all kind of will tend to say, we'll think like, oh, my kids are definitely my priority. But how are you acting and showing that your kids really are the priority. Like what are your actions meeting your words and what you say? And this is a time to get really reflective on those things. For example, if you are dead broke and going bankrupt and struggling and stressed out all the dang time, are you really truly able to fully invest and enjoy time in your kids? Like where are the actual priorities in life from where you're at right now? Like let's take an honest look, an honest snapshot. And there's no shame in where you're at right now. It's great to be content where you're at right now, but let's get like really lasered in and focused on where we are and where we want to go. So what are the three most important things in your life? What are the three things in your life that you just, you couldn't live without, you know, like, um, it, you know, is it just growing in your spirituality and in your faith and in your trust and in your, um, love? Wait, what did she say? I think a huge issue is for whatever reason, women are their biggest critic and don't realize how awesome they already are. Have a hard time realizing their purpose is hard, definitely. And it trails off, so. Yeah, I mean, that's, it. I just read something about that, and, and it was saying that, you know, we're always searching for, you know, what, how to better ourselves and what, what we don't have and everything, and to be seen and to be important. Um, but, we actually already are. We are important and we are seen and we are um, so special. Um, and if if we don't feel like that is, is true about, um, you know, whether our husbands feel that about us or, or, you know, anybody feels that about us, the Lord really does. Right. We already are because he sees us that right. way. We were created with such a huge purpose and with so much love from him given to us freely, like Mm -hmm. completely. And like he desires us. It says in its word that he desires us. And that just always stands out to me. You know, we all have our different struggles and things, but you know, even as like the single mom feeling like I've had the need of like, I just wish I had a man's arms around me and realizing that that's Mm -hmm. not. And with, with that being said too, like, we are important. We are seen. We are treasured by him. Mm-hmm. He also wants us to dream. Right. He wants us, he puts it in us to have bigger goals, silly goals even, mm-hmm. um, and, and dream and, and be okay if maybe those, those goals change or those dreams change. Right. I believe that wholeheartedly. Like one of my favorite verses still, and like I just have always loved it in Psalms and it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And I know that part of desiring him, delighting in him is seeking to do his will, is seeking to walk humbly and live with purpose and being called out. But to even 
say that it's the desires of your heart like he planted those desires there for a reason and for a purpose too so go after them like it's okay and and we want to do it like we want to do it together because Habakkuk 2 2 and 3 like write the vision plainly and God will come through for you like just I love that anyway so what are the three most important things what is the main vision goal for 2017 and 2000 into 2018? So like I said last night, I have that big, huge picture goal. Like by the time I'm 42, this is what I want to have happen. But what will make me feel like I'm propelling towards that in 2017? What is that vision statement for the 2017 um like time frame, okay? So like it's a whole year. And you know, 2016 went by like that. I know you all feel it. We feel it. Like I think the older you get, the faster time goes somehow. I don't know how that works, but it does. So what is that? And then what steps can you start with? I gave you four to write on our on our little challenge sheet, but feel free to add more if you already know like I have to do this or I have to do that. And I'm not talking about your big master to-do list. I'm talking about like chunking out the phases. So for example, Jennifer, you talked about like wanting to sell out your course and you know, reaching women and whether it's in photography or crafting or whatever it may be, what steps do you need to take to start selling a course? You know, do you need to have a website? Are you doing local? Are you doing uh, online? What kind of, what kind of steps do you need to take? And you could almost phase it out into like the four quarters of the year, or you could break it out by month, which we are going to go a little bit deeper on in this challenge this weekend. But what are some of those steps? What are some of those like time chunk blocks that you need to take to reach what it is? You know, if it is a goal of organizing your kitchen or your home better, by what point, at what step will you accomplish something towards that goal? And I think a good thing to, to do with these um, too, and I'm, I'm from the medical um, community, so when we always make goals is the one thing that you need to do is have a time frame. Mm -hmm. So say, I am going to do this and, and make it so specific. I mean, you're not, um, we're not making goals, but we're, we're talking about, right. you know, steps towards a goal, which is essentially short term goals, right. um, towards a bigger term goal. So you want to make a very specific, um, time frame and make it, we call it objective. You have, you, you, you have to be able to say, yes, I met that. Or, right. Yes, I did that. Right. Some different ways of like calling them SMART goals. Have you ever heard of yeah. SMART goal? Okay. So um, some people have different ways of putting it out. I have some things that I'm like, I really love about SMART goals and some things where I'm like, it's so, there's so much more of a priority and drive to them that I almost don't use it. But it's a really good acronym to remember for um, your SMART goal is that it's specific, it's measurable, it's actionable, it's it's either real time or realistic. And I hate the word realistic in so many ways because there's goals mm -hmm. that we have that aren't necessarily realistic, but it's also trackable. So I like to think of it in like real time, like how can you real time measure it and how can you track it? And that's the, I don't know if you've ever heard smart in a different way. Cause I know you do that kind of well, thing I mean, similarly, but mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we use, we, I mean, we, we teach SMART goals to students and, and uh, new therapists coming in all the time, too. So, But the biggest thing is is exactly that. Like, can you measure it? Can it, And it makes it easier. And the other thing I say is don't, you have your main vision, but these four steps kind of are your short-term goals that, that you can see the change and you can get, like, pumped and excited when those little tiny things happen. Right. Um, whether it's just, like you said, like, okay, I will organize my closet by one month from now or two right. weeks from now or whatever it is. Right. Um, and be able to share that with each other. Like, I really want to have that connection here in this group that you guys can have that accountability. And everybody has their own unique journey, their own unique story, and their own unique desires. And like I said last night, like, we're here to build you up in that and encourage you in what you're going after. So don't feel silly. Don't feel like, oh, mine's not significant enough or mine is too big or whatever, whatever you have going on in your mind to say, like, I shouldn't be doing this. Like, take a deep breath and realize we're here and it's okay. Like, really, it's okay. Um, think about the tasks that you're doing. Like, think about the tasks that you're going after to achieve. 
what categories do you find those things falling into most often? Um, so we talked about the things that are most important in your life, the main vision. This is just kind of like a little bit of an extra thing here where we're, we're breaking it down and, you know, we've already done more of the goal achieving thing or the goal setting side of it. So I'm just kind of trying to break down some of the things. Um, one of the things that Donna had mentioned is that she struggles with, um, like getting it all done, like all of the, the time to like manage the house and do the things that she desires doing and getting the kids from school and like taking care of those different things. So one of the things that I find it helpful as you're going about goal setting and, and breaking things out into like your real time. And that's what I like to use the R for and the smart is what tasks do you find yourself doing on a daily basis that uh, propel you towards your goals? So what categories do they kind of fall into? You know, are you spending a lot of time on social media and scrolling social media? Do you spend a lot of time in, you know, hanging out with your kids or running them to school or going to soccer practice and doing all those things? Do you find yourself doing a lot of things with like the housework and do they kind of go into a category? Like where do you find yourself spending the time? And it's just a good like kind of reflective thing to really like pause, stop and write down where the where your time drains are and where things are going and, and what tasks that you have going on and what categories they fall into so that you can press those tasks against your priority statements to figure out what can um like what can kind of wait like what's what's going to actually propel you towards the priority like for example i'm okay letting my house go a little bit if it means i can spend more time going out to a park with the kids or working on the specific goals in my business. And some people aren't okay with that, but know that that's part of the balance, right? It's not having everything perfect in every area all the time. It's realizing where your focus matters most to take you to the next level. If I'm making sense in how I'm saying that. Yeah, no, it's, it's so true. It's almost, if you think about it, like a time budget, mm -hmm. you hate, the idea of it seems so silly. You're like, I know where I spend my time. But if you actually sit, I mean, I'm just thinking this now as we're talking. But if you <laughs> sit down and say, all right, yesterday, this is exactly how I budgeted my time yesterday. And then today, this is how I exactly budgeted it. If you go over that for a week even, mm -hmm. you see where your time went, where you can switch things, what do you want to prioritize. And then you can even give yourself you can be really strict for another week and say, okay, today I'm going to actually time myself with Facebook. I'm going to put a, a timer right there and say, I'm, I only, sorry. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> I only have, I'm going to have spend 10 minutes because I know I want to spend 10 minutes on cleaning and that's all I'm going to get done today because that's all the time right. I have. Right. Instead of. It's also that like reactive and proactive work. I really have loved that concept. Like Stacy kind of really brought that out in me as I was working with her when she was talking about how, you know, in the morning she knows she has three hours without her, without her girls. Like they go to daycare or whatever it is. And she knows she has three hours. So instead of like doing all the little tasks, like checking her emails and all those things like she dedicates those three hours to proactive working towards her goals or towards the things that she knows that she prioritizes and she wants to work on. And then for three hours in the afternoon, she does more of the reactive goals, which is like her customer service, her checking of emails, because sometimes when you do those little reactive things, they kind of add additional to do's almost onto your list. And it just is a really good way to kind of break up your day. And it may not be three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon for you. It's You have to figure out what that is. But really get intentional about what is your proactive working and your reactive working as well. And that will help you with kind of budgeting and prioritizing what you have to do. I feel that exercise helps. Even if it's a brisk 30-minute walk by yourself gives you such a boost of energy. Really Absolutely. Does. Absolutely. I'm even – I'm a big one. Michael Hyatt – talks about this all the time and I'm a big one for it too just because of my own like personal health and well-being but I'm a big one for 20 minute naps like 20 minute power naps with like a like meditation or or relaxation uh, music or whatever it would be like in the afternoon now I don't do a 20 minute nap every day but if I'm struggling like those types of things are great and if you go in intentionally knowing that that's what you need or what you want to do like 
budget that in to your priorities and to your tasks. And sometimes it's just a matter of like, we know we need the rest, but it like, it almost becomes like addictive. Like I'm just going to watch this one more show or I'm just going to go, you know, do this load of laundry really quick. But then we get sideswiped. Like Heidi even said to me about the one touch rule today and I had to ask her what the one touch rule was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, like um, I said, I never do it and I should because my house is a disaster right now. But um, the idea of saying, oh, I need to put this away. And then you grab five other things and put them in a different spot that they don't actually go in. But you're just kind of storing them there until, well, that's not the one touch rule. The one touch rule is as soon as you touch it, you're putting it back in exactly that place that you exactly want where it, it goes. to be. Yeah, which I'm, I'm, I never even heard of that role. So I'm like, oh, could I, could I even implement that? But I know I'm awful because I spent, what, we spent a good 15 minutes just looking for this thing because I moved it from the box that it was in to put it away in a more specific spot. And I couldn't remember what that specific spot was because I ended up sidetracking and putting it in a million different places that it probably didn't need to be. But we found it. So <laughs> yay. Anyway, so what are those, what are the categories? And, um, you know, Tony Robbins really talks about that with his RPM uh, time management, which I love too, is like kind of that idea of, you know, when we have those brain dumps and we have like our to-do list, like running through our head, like a million miles a minute, because we all do. It's like, we got to do the laundry. We got to do the dishes. We got to do this. We got to, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it becomes like a mile long. If you can categorize that to-do list into those like main categories, those priority categories, you're going to feel a lot lighter and you're going to be able to see taking action for the things that have the most impact, like doing the tasks that like 20% of the tasks that are going to get you 80% of the effort and impact. You know, sometimes people think, well, I have to do social media in my business and I have to do this and I have to do that. Like slow yourself down a little bit and take the time to master like the one area in either social media or internet marketing or um, not internet, email marketing or YouTube video or whatever it would be so that you can have that 80% impact in one area instead of like having 8% impact in several areas and wasting your time and feeling like you're spinning your wheels. So it's a really good way to go about doing that. What are the things that you absolutely cannot live without right now? Like what things in your life can you just absolutely not live without? What, what, would it be like your alone time? Would it be your kids? Would it be, you know, what, what is, <coughs> excuse me, what is something you feel like you just couldn't live without? Well, like, well, like Jennifer said, like exercise or your naps or right. whatever <laughs> it is that you need, um, or want. Yeah. And then finally, it's really good to start thinking about the things that can wait, the things that it's not the end of the world if it's not done right now. Like for some people, we were talking about one of our friends, Jen, who her house is like, it's tiny, but it's gorgeous. Like it's, it's a magazine home, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, where do, where do, how do they live there? Like, where do her kids, how do they play? Like, what do they, what do they do? Like, this is like the kind of conversations that I've had them with her too. So it's not like I'm, I'm not talking about her like in a weird way, in a admiring way, because we're mm -hmm. like, not yay, way. we hung a picture on the wall. Go us. <laughs> right? Like, but to me, as much as I look and admire that, and that's her and it's her passion and her love, like. I'm totally cool with like if there's Legos on the floor and you come over and you have you happen to step on a Lego and, and, and break your foot and curse me out because <laughs> that's just the reality of my life and I that's the way like I position myself. Like I value other things differently than that. Am I making sense of what I'm saying and how I'm yeah. saying that too? Like where do you value where do you personally value? And that's one of the things that I just I really believe strongly in. Let's not get caught up in what somebody else says we should be valuing or caught up in the goals somebody else says we should be having, no matter what it is. Or even even not even what somebody else, but what you convince yourself. Convince yourself. That's a good one. That's so me. Yeah. I convince myself that that should be a priority in my life when, honestly, if I'm, if I'm just honest with myself... There's three other things that are more important to me, and that's why I need to be okay with those other things not being perfect. Right. So really identifying those priorities is huge. 
and just like Heidi said, like letting go, like not, not convincing yourself that it all is going to be a hundred percent perfect all the time. Cause it's not. And it doesn't mean you, you don't have a well-rounded, balanced, successful, happy life. If it's not like there's, there's, there's give and take in all of it. And what you, what you choose to focus on, you will continue to get better at, and you will continue to feel more accomplished, happy, and successful as you laser in and target that focus. So really think about those three most important things and then those tasks and the categories they fall into so that you can then say, what can wait or what can I have somebody else do? I know for a long time I had somebody else doing my laundry. Like I just outsourced my laundry. I know some people outsource their cooking or have a cleaner come in once a week because my time's valuable, your time's valuable, and I knew it was easier for me. Now, not everybody can do that in every situation and all the time, you know, especially starting out in business. You're a solo, you're a solopreneur. So it may be like in the case of starting your own online business, you know, you can't hire somebody to do your email marketing campaign or do your graphics or do whatever. But what skills can you start with that you have right now? And where can you identify like what you're really good at and you really specialize in so that you can start figuring out who can fill in some of those other tasks and those other things um, to kind of help you go forward and go farther and get more accomplished and done. Does that all sound about right? Mm -hmm. I think that was all we talked about. So I don't want to keep you guys too much longer today. I will be back on at nine o'clock. Thanks Heidi for coming on with us. I can't believe the kid. I just did that for real. That just happened. What did you do? I, I just answer. like smeared my makeup across my face. Oh, oh well. <laughs> good yeah I'm a klutz like that anyway uh, we did some awesome photo shooting this morning and a lot of fun things too that was that fun was it was a good time we went over to Daniel Boone um, homestead yeah that's actually here in this area Pennsylvania girl here mm -hmm. um, if you ever heard of Daniel Boone but some people probably have no idea who Daniel Boone even is mm -hmm. history anyway thank you guys so much I'll see you tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern we'll be right here um, I will put out challenge four at no not challenge four challenge three we're on challenge two right now again make sure that when you do these challenges like go ahead and type them up take pictures whatever works best for you just make sure you tag me um, and hashtag like the challenge number and weekend by me so that I know and I can find it and we can encourage each other and I can give you little feedback tips ideas Heidi's jumping into like was reading the comments and everything with me today and has been really awesome so I love doing this stuff and I'm really excited for what's to come so thanks again thanks again for your time and your comments and we'll see you soon enjoy the moments guys